Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which is to say in the Paleo Hebrew, also known as the Lashawan Kwadash, Yahweh, which is the name of our Heavenly Father, meaning He is. Bahashem, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai, meaning He is our salvation. To the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans here in the Western Hemisphere and to the rest scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth who look like the other nations, but through the Patrilene lineage go back to the Hebrew Israelites. Vain Babylons. Vain Babylons and oppositions of so-called science. Okay? Now this is off the site earth.com and it reads, Astrophysicist thinks he's cracked the equation for time travel. In the paragraph up under, it says, Can you imagine going back in time to visit a love? Slakia. Let me start over again. Can you imagine going back in time to visit a lost loved one? This heart wrenching desire is what propelled astrophysics professor Ron Mallet. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a Jake. You know, but under the vibration of Esau Edom's, you know, falsely so-called science, he's, you know, took it on this role that he believes that, you know, he cracked the code where he can bend light and go back in time. OK, just showing you the madness of Esau Edom. Now, it says Ron Mallet on a lifelong quest to build a time machine. After years of research, Professor Mallet claims to have finally developed a revolutionary equation for time travel. The idea of bending time to our will, revisiting the past, altering history, or glimpsing into the future has been a staple of science fiction for over a century. But could it move from fantasy to reality? Not in this lifetime, you know. <laughs> you won't be going back in time anytime soon in this, in this lifetime. Now, if you are a Jake, which I believe you are, you know, you can, if you repent from these teachings of Esau, Edom, you know, you can get that new body where you could travel to, you know, different uh, galaxies and, you know, planets and things of that uh, nature, pursuing the St. John 14 and the second verse in my father's house of many mansions. But under this current, you know, ideology and science of Esau, Edom, you're not traveling in time and you're not going back in time and altering history or anything like that. OK. Now it says the idea of bending time to our will, revisiting the past, altering history or glimpsing into the future has been a staple of science fiction for over a century. But could it move from fantasy to reality? Nope. The inspiration, a father's love in a classic novel. Professor's mallet obsession with time travel and his equation has its roots in a shattering childhood experience. When he was just 10 years old, his father, a television repairman who fostered his son's love of science, tragically passed away from a heart attack. OK, and you need to get, you know, solace from reading the book because it tells you, you know, these things are, you know, are, are of prophecy, you know. You, you come back in the third and fourth generation, okay? So, you know, if he knew that his father, you know, heart attack was brought on by, you know, judgment that, you know, he may did in his past, you know, incarnations, then he would have more, you know, solace outside of looking into science fiction novels and books and things of Esau Edom, okay? Because Esau Edom is not giving him, you know, complete clarity on why things happen like this. OK, that's why he's under the impression that he can build a time machine and go back in time to save his father. All right. It says. Devastated, the young mallet sought solace in books. It was H.G. Wells, the time machine that sparked a lifelong fascination. Wells opening lines became his mantra. Scientific people know very well that time is only a kind of space. And why cannot we move in time as we move about in the other dimensions of space? We're going to get that in the scriptures. This profound question ignited Mallet's, Mallet's scientific journey. 
He dedicated himself to understanding the nature of time, determined to find a way to revisit the past and see his beloved father once more. Okay. And, you know, like I said, I believe this, you know, I believe this man is a Jake, you know, and if he repent, you know, and turn back from his wicked ways under this, you know, vibration of Esau, Edom, you know, he can, he, he can bring back his father in the kingdom. Okay. So this time bending alter, you know, science, scientific science fiction novel that he read and this title that Esau Edom gave him, you know, as an astrophysics, you know, that's all to throw you off. OK, repent, you know, leave these uh, vain babblings and these opposition to so-called science alone, man, because Esau Edom, you know, his science ain't, you know, ain't kicking on anything. All right. It says decades of research into black holes and Einstein theories of relativity led to the time travel equation. While hospitalized, while hospitalized for, for a heart condition, Mallet had a revelation. It turns out that black holes can create a gravitational field that could lead to the creation of time loops that could allow us to go back in time, he explained. Right, and you're not going back in time or anything in these bodies that we currently have right now okay like i said i believe this guy's a jake you know and if he repent you know he get transformed in a twinkle of the eye pursuant to uh first corinthians 15 right around right around the 50th verse you know he can get those new bodies where he could travel to other planets and galaxies okay but in this current body that we have right now you're not traveling and going back in time or anything like that okay it says, imagine the fabric of space-time as a river. While time usually flows in one direction, Mallet theorized that the immense gravity of a spinning black hole can create whirlpools where time twists back on itself. Okay? Mallet's vision for a time machine centers on what he calls an intense and continuous rotating beam of light. To manipulate gravity, his device would use a ring of lasers to mimic the space-time distorting effects of a black hole. Let's say you have a cup of coffee in front of you. Start, start stirring the coffee with a spoon. It starts to spin right. That was, that's what a spinning black hole does, explained Mallet. In Einstein's theory, space and time are related to each other. That's why it's called space time. So when the black hole spins, it will actually cause time to shift. Eventually, a rotating beam of laser lights can be used as a kind of time machine and cause time warp that will allow us to go back to the past, said Mallet. Perhaps what began as a son's wish to see his father one last time might one day transform our understanding of time itself. OK, and like I said, if he had understanding of the scriptures, he would have solace to know that, you know, his dad came and that was his judgment, you know, and it played out. OK, now, if he was to repent and turn back, you know, and be and if he was part of the elect, then what? He's going to bring his father back into the kingdom. OK, but under this Esau Edom's uh, ideology and his philosophy, you know, as an astrophysicist, you know, it's not going to ever, it's not going to ever come to, okay? You're never going to go back in time, all right? The bounds have been set. You cannot do them, okay? Your days have already been determined before you come into this world, all right? Now, let's go and get a few scriptures and let's go from there. This is 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20, and it reads, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. And thinking that you can create a time machine and go back in time is oppositions of science falsely so-called because you can't. OK, these bodies that we currently inhabit cannot take that kind of, you know, force and cannot go back in time. OK, it just can't. All right. And although you have, you know, gain a lot of notoriety in Esau Edom's kingdom and you have these prestigious titles like astrophysics, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't 
uh, omit you from, you know, it doesn't omit you or, you know, allow you to not, you know, feel the effects of the things that the Most High have put into place already, okay? And you cannot, and you cannot outdo the days that the Most High have already set aside for you, all right? Now, this is, uh, let's go to Job. 14 in verse 5 it says seeing his days are determined the number of his months are with thee thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass right so you cannot go back in time just to try to save your dad or try to alter history or try to prolong your days you cannot your days are already set you know and speaking of Esau Edom his days are set as well okay you cannot go back in time, no matter how Esau Edom puts it in movies and give you these prestigious, you know, titles and write these great novels that can have you to believe that you can go back in time. You cannot go back in time. OK, your days are already set. All right. It says seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds. And when you go into that word bounds, one of the outline biblical usage is, you know, limits. OK, so seeing that. So that let's start again. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. OK, so you cannot go back in time to try to, you know, bring back your father or you cannot go back in time to try to, you know, do something that you could have did to help prolong your days on this earth because your days are already determined. All right. And you cannot go back in time to, you know, change those. Now, you know, in theory, you, 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 you make a good point. If you could be in light, you can go back in time. But guess what? These bodies cannot uh, handle that type of force. Okay. That's why we're going to have to get new bodies in order to travel, you know, the universe and galaxies. OK, you're not going to be able to travel in these bodies. And like I said, I believe he's a Jake. Jake. So this is first Corinthians. 15. In verse. 50, it says, now this I say. Brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Okay? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the, trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay? So when the trumpet, you know, sounds, you know, those of us of the elect, you know, we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right. And with these new bodies that we're going to get, we can, you know, time travel, as you were to say, we can go into different planets and galaxies. We can do things that these bodies that we currently inhabit that's, that cannot do because why? They have limitations to them. They have bounds. OK, so the fact that you try to go back in time, you know, is going against the word, okay? And that's exactly what Esau Edom wants you to do. He wants you to, you know, think that you can, you know, outdo what the word, what prophecy says, what, what you can't, all right? Now it says, for, the, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality, okay? When we get the new bodies, when we change from mortal to immortal, we can do those type of things. We can go and travel in outer space, okay? We can, you know, go through, you know, black holes and all type of things, okay? We're going to travel to, you know, planets that, that's never been inhabited, okay? But under these current, you know, conditions and limits that we have, you know, we cannot do that. No matter how many books you read, no matter, you know, how many ideas and, you know, theories you come up with, these bodies are not going to be able to play him out with, okay? That's why we said avoid profane babbling and opposition of so-called science, falsely so-called science, okay? Because although he has those prestigious titles, he has no idea, clue what's going on, all right? Job 
This is Job 5 and verse 13. And it reads, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the flower he is carried headlong. Right. So this man is, you know, wise in the eyes of Esau, you know, because they gave him a prestigious title like an astrophysics, you know, but yet he can't understand that these bodies that we currently inhabit cannot take that type of force and go back in time like he's trying to, you know, convey. OK, but that's under the, you know, vibration in the guise of Esau Edom. OK, Esau Edom will have you thinking these type of things. All right. So it says he taketh the wise in their own craftiness because this guy is wise in the eyes, you know, of the world. You know, he's an actual physicist. OK, you know, he knows everything about, you know, uh, black holes, you know, worm, wormholes, niveas and all type of things. But he can't see the fact that these bodies that we currently inhabit cannot take that type of force, you know, and you're going to build, build a machine to try to go into outer space. Because you believe Esau Edom went to the moon? Okay? These are the things that, you know, he take of the wise of their own craftiness. Okay? And like I said, I believe this guy's a Jake, man. So, you know, he needs to repent from these ways that Esau Edom has put inside, you know, and taught him through, the, through his uh, ideologies and his philosophies. All right? This is St. Luke, chapter 16. In verse 15, and it reads, and he said it to them, yeah, they would justify yourselves before man. Okay, you got a, a prestige title, you know, you justify yourself before man, you known as, you know, an astrophysics, someone that's well, you know, well informed about these type of things. But what? But the most high know of your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men, an astrophysicist is abomination in the sight of the most high. The most high could care less about, you know, you being an astrophysicist. OK, because why? That's not going to help you get into the kingdom because you're an astrophysicist. OK, what you need to know is, you know, things like, you know, repentant, leaving this man's, you know, uh, speaking of Esau, Edom, leaving this man's ideologies uh, behind. OK, because those things like that can, you know, puff up your pride to make you think that you're better than what you actually are. All right. And that's under Esau Edom's, you know, vibration. You coming in the same way as a serpent. OK, because why? You're proud. You think you know everything. You have a God like, you know, complex, you know, just like Esau Edom. OK. And those things like that is going to get you taken out because you're not going to have faith that you can deliver your own self in the time of, you know, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, <clears throat> excuse me. And not only that, when the missiles come, you're going to be so puffed up, you know, and so prideful, you're not going to believe that, you know, there's there's a Lord and Savior and his name is Yahweh that's going to come deliver. You're going to try to justify it by some science, okay? And that's how you're going to get, you know, taken out. He taking the wise in his, you know, he taking the wise in his own uh, craftiness, okay? So, you know, be careful of these, prof uh, these vain babblings in opposition to so-called science, all right? And this is, what, this is what time traveling is, you know, it's just vain babblings because you're not going, <clears throat> Slocky, you're not going anywhere in these bodies, okay? You're not going anywhere other than what's already been set for your bounds, okay? So, you know, this is just a, a, a lesson to bring forth, you know, to tell you that, you know, Esau, Edom, man, you know, he's gotten to our people to the fact that, you know, they think they, you know, know something when they don't. OK, because why? They're under the vibration of the serpent. OK, just like the serpent got Eve in the garden. He's getting our people today and believing in these false narratives that you can go back and bend time and alter. the. If that was the case, man, you think Esau Edom wouldn't have already went back to try to get his birthright by now? Of course he would have, okay? That's why he can't. He, his balance, his days are already determined, man. Ain't no going back in, ain't no going back in time because if that was the case, Esau Edom would have already went back and tried to undo the birthright, okay? So these are the things that, you know, we have solace in this truth knowing, okay? But out there in the world, you know, you ain't going to have this type of solace. That's why, you know, you're still trying to, 
you know, go back in time to bring back your father. Okay. He's gone. He's in the, you know, he's, he's in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the heavens. He's in the peace, you know? Okay. He may have already been back and put into another body. All right. So these are the things we get in this truth, knowing and solace. Okay. But in the world, you're not going to get that kind of rest and peace. Okay. So if he knew his father was already, you know, in the heavens, you know, he will understand that, you know, he's already uh, getting judged and probably put back already into another body. Okay. So there's no going back in time to try to, you know, alter the history and do all type of things. Because if, it, if, it, if that was the case, you know, Esau Edom would have already done it by now, which he can't. All right. So this is St. John 16. In 33, it reads, These things have I spoken unto you. This is Yahweh Shah speaking, that in me ye might have peace. Okay, we get solace in this truth, peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. That's why you're trying to build a time machine to go back in time because you have tribulation. Okay, because under this man, ideologies and theologies, you you you, you can't rest. You can't. You can't have solace and peace because you don't know that your father, you know, he's in the heavens. OK, he's in the, you know, in the, in the uh, what's the word? He's in he's in the you know, he's in he's in a better place. OK, he's resting. All right. It says what? But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Right. And like I said, I believe this man is a Jake. So, you know. He needs to get he needs to get with the program, okay, and leave Esau Edom's program alone because there's nothing of Esau Edom that's going to stand after Yahweh Shai comes back, okay. So these titles that they give you, astrophysics and you know all type of things, it's not gonna it's not gonna matter, you know, once this place goes up in fire, man, it goes up in smoke, all right. So let's go ahead and close out First Peter five and verse eight. And it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. OK. And, you know, he give you these titles, you know, to puff up your pride and, you know, to put you in a state where you think, you know, better than the most high. OK. And by doing so, you're not you're not showing that you have faith. All right. You want to you want to try to be your own savior. You want to try to go back in time and undo the things that the most high has already done. All right. And when he said he set the balance, you know, there was the balance you cannot, you know, go back and undo. All right. No matter how wise you think you are, you can't outwise the most high. OK. He take up the wise at their own craftiness. All right. So leave Esau, Edom, so-called science alone, which are vain babblers, you know, and get into this truth. All right. So with that being said, I pray someone was edified through this lesson. And until the next time, if it be the good Lord's will, stay strong, stay in the faith. We are almost home. Shalom. Peace.